All right, so today I'm looking at a new lens from b -Script. And yeah, it's buried somewhere underneath this rig. And so let me just quickly go over what I'm using here. This is a Beast cage with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I've got a Beast handle on here to hold down here for an extra grip. And then I have a top handle up here as well, which I like, especially if you have it on sticks or whatever, that way you can pull it off quickly and easily. I also have a NATO rail on here that I can put a monitor on, which I'm not using right now. And then have a quick release down here. And this one is from a company called Shape. And it's kind of a medium duty quick release. It is designed for these lighter setups. I have heavier duty ones, and then I have lighter ones for lighter setups. And on front here, of course, is the lens. But on the outside of the lens, I have a Freewell magnetic filter system. This is a 77 millimeter setup and I have a step-up ring that goes from 58 millimeter to 77. Most of the filters I buy are 77. Now I do have some 58 millimeter stuff and b -Script actually has some nice filters that I'm going to look at in a future video, but today I'm using this from Freewell. And then here is the actual lens. And the nice thing about this lens is it does have a thread mount on the outside. It's 58 millimeter, so this goes right on there. And then on the back, it's also threaded. And so it easily attaches to the B Script cage. And this would also attach to the B Script Pro, anything that has this particular screw mount. Now, the Beast cage has additional mounts that I won't go over right now, but it's nice because you can mount moment lenses or Sandmark or additional B Script Pro type lenses that are their M mount. And so this is interchangeable. The other thing you can do with this is you loosen it and you can flip it around. There's the actual iPhone lenses. You can flip it around and then you can attach this lens to this side. That way you can do the tele or the wide. And then you have a very secure mount. And so this is a pretty robust setup. This is the same cage I used for my B-Script DOF adapter stuff. And so this works well with a variety of different kinds of setups. And that's one thing I really like. And you could also, of course, pair this down. You don't have to have these top handles you could take those off. You don't have to have the filter if you're shooting inside. You don't have to have half this stuff really. You could just get it down to the cage and then a quick release and put it on a tripod, or you could just hold it with handles. But that's the setup that I'm using with the new b -Script two times telephoto lens. So the lens comes with the lens cap, which is nice, and a carrying bag, a soft bag. Has drawstrings. It's not super protective, but it definitely works. And so you can drop this in a case pretty easily. And then you could also use the bag as a lens cloth if needed. It's soft enough. 
The build quality of this lens is very good. It's solid. It feels heavy in your hand. It feels almost like a small lens you would put on a traditional camera. So I think it'll be a long lasting piece of gear. And since it has a universal screw mount on the back, you'll be able to take it across a variety of different phones as they progress. So in my testing, I have found the edge to edge sharpness to be very good. Haven't seen any vignetting, no soft edges or dark corners. And the chromatic aberration has been very minimal or not at all. Now it's not perfect though, as it does flare very easily, as you can see in this shot and I showed in previous shots of the tape measure and stuff on the table. I also notice inner element reflections, and this often occurs with filters more than it does with third-party lenses, but it can occur. And so basically it's just reflections and light in between the two pieces of glass, the external lens and the built-in lens. And it's very prevalent in this neon sign shot, and it even inverts the image and so the reflection is upside down, something I really hadn't noticed that prominently before. So everything I've showed up until now has been shot on the iPhone wide. Here are some iPhone tele samples. So tele on tele. And here the lens didn't perform nearly as well. And this is largely due, I believe, to the 65 millimeter tele on the 12 Pro Max. The main issue I had was using autofocus to set my focus before I locked it. It pulsed and frequently wouldn't lock on. And in some cases I could never get things in focus. Here's a screen recording in Filmic Pro and you can see it's just pulsing back and forth. It won't lock on the focus. The 12 Pro Max focuses differently up close. And so my assumption is that's what's going on here. And so what I had to do was manually set the focus using peaking in Filmic Pro. Not a big deal, but it is unusual to have to do it like this. And again, sometimes I could never get things in focus and mainly it was things in the distance. And so here is that shot now in focus. Looks pretty good, but there is still some weirdness going on. So overall, I do like this lens, in particular using it on the wide. Using it on the wide lens, I got excellent results and that is what I would recommend with this lens. Although again, you can use the tele on tele and you can get some very nice shallow depth of field, but it is a little trickier to work with and you can end up with some issues. So just something to be aware of. And of course, remember the 12 Pro Max has a larger wide camera sensor and it has a longer telephoto lens. And so they act differently than the regular Pro model and of course, previous iPhones. So yeah, I do recommend this lens with the caveats I mentioned. You can definitely get some interesting shots that do not look like you're shooting on a smartphone. Thanks for watching guys. This is Blake Calhoun. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.